time for an arm pump. I tell you what, it is time for a freaking arm pump if I have ever had one. Um, I've still got the measuring tape in the bag, but it's only been a week. I don't think there's any point. You know, like it's cool to track your arm measurements and stuff like that, but I mean, <laughs> you're not going to put half an inch on your arms in a week. You're not going to put a quarter, maybe you'll put a tenth of an inch on your arms in a week. But honestly, you won't even notice that kind of thing. I'd say month to month, month to month, check your, you know, measure your arms, see where you're standing. And you may have to come to a realization if you look at that data and it just says fucking, you know, let's say 16 inches, 16 inches, six, just same after month after month after month. Then what's that telling you? It's telling you your arms are not growing so you know maybe if you only do a little bit of biceps after back day or maybe if you only do a little bit of tries after chest day then you got to reevaluate your approach you know i love a dedicated arm day partially actually not even partially pretty much just because i like having a full-on arm pump uh, but there's actually a, a couple more reasons chest and tries i do like I do like a chest and try day, but for me, back and buys, biceps come into play too much on back, so I just, you know, I don't know, I just don't love doubling up, like, if I'm going to get a little bit of bicep activation and then do a kind of a scrappier bicep workout after back, I don't know, I just enjoy you know, waiting for the next day and then doing buys on their own, nice and fresh. I always just get a bit of, I, uh, get, <laughs> I almost combined a bigger and better. I always get, well, a bigger and better pump. Plus, it just feels better curling when I'm fresh. You know, it wouldn't make sense to train a muscle if it's already been fatigued inadvertently. Right? That's why I would never want to do cardio. Well, I guess that's kind of taxing your whole system. But I wouldn't want to do cardio, you know, right before the lift. Right? If I've done my cardio, I tax my system. I'll wait for myself to recover a little bit, and then, and then go hit whatever I'm hitting. So today, I don't want to say a dark day, but today was an unfortunate day for my little buddy, Oliver. He's our, our new cat. He got neutered, so he's fucking off his rocker right now. Uh, we. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. He's uh, we just locked him up in his cage. He's fucking bouncing off the walls. I'm sure by morning he'll be feeling like his normal self again. I just hope he doesn't lose that animal instinct to go hunt, because he's been bringing in mice. Honestly, like, fuck, I think he got like three in one day. It's kind of brutal though. He doesn't eat them. He just kills them. <laughs> Crazy, but you know, other than that, yeah, I mean, tries are gonna be just normal push downs of a variety. I mean, I might do some single arm cable, probably some normal push downs as well. Ropes, dips, overhead dumbbell, of course, because I want that stretch and long position. And then buys, I'll just do a couple different kinds of curls dumbbell, cable, preacher, machine. Uh, easy bar, I mean, anything where I'm loading my biceps and going from here to here, it's good in my book. Maybe I'll do some bicep biased pull downs too. I haven't done that for a little while. Uh, I don't know. Maybe because subconsciously I don't really love it, but I do like the squeeze that I can get. You know, that's when you're holding on to a straight bar on like a pull down or like you're seated in front of the cable and you really just try to pull with your biceps kind of like you're trying to pull your hands to your shoulders so you got to have a little bit of mind muscle connection to not activate your lats and just squeeze your biceps. but yeah i mean maybe five ish sets probably i don't know maybe six max i don't have a specific number that i'm aiming for i'm really just training you know doing set after set after set 
until I feel honestly just fucking satisfied. And that's sort of just based on you know training experience. But I guess in my mind, I kind of judge it off of how fatigued do I feel? How much of kind of a burning sensation do I feel? How hard were those sets? And the point isn't to get a pump and be done. But I think by the time you have a, you know, your peak pump, you will have done enough work to you know, satisfy being done with that lift. But let's say for whatever reason I'm fully pumped after one set. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop after one set. You know, you gotta, you gotta be a little bit. What's the word here? I want to say don't be apprehensive, but I don't think that's right. I don't know. What, you, you look at it from a couple angles. But if you got like an eight set bicep workout or like a ten set bicep workout that you've been doing and it's been working for you, then don't just go around flipping your routine out of nowhere just because someone told you otherwise. Right. Make sure you're really going hard. And then as time progresses, if you think you're sort of plateauing, maybe take a look at what you've been doing, ask around, see if something else could uh, potentially be working better for you. Oh yeah, holy shit, I almost forgot. So I want to say it's, this is like the precursor to the 12 days of Christmas. I think it's the, uh, the eight days of Black Friday for, uh, for all the hostile subs. So by the time I get, well, really, this only applies for if you're watching this video the day that it gets posted. But I'll have to add the code right here if I remember to overlay it. I will. I'll remember. And it's, uh, if you get one tub of the amino electrolyte mix of the Silo 9, then you'll get a, a free shaker and a funnel. That's one thing I've been slacking. I need a fucking funnel. I keep pouring pre all over my jug. But yeah, code, I guess I've already shown. So that is all I gotta say now. So let's just get, let's just get freaking started. I feel like I'm kind of just repeating the same tricep starter movement every lift, but I don't know, something about doing these, like, obviously not light, but rather than just trying to load up like three plates on the side of the stack, just doing these kind of cross body extensions, something about the squeeze, I just like it. So, okay, let's just throw it around. Squeeze is fucking hard to beat, even with the rope. Yeah. Let's do one more here. That felt sweet. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing a few more sets of a movement. Just, I mean, if you fucking feel like doing it. But really what I'm trying to say is the opposite. If you're doing a set of something, it just feels kind of off. You don't really love it. And there's nothing wrong with just moving on to something else too. Right? If... It's just not clicking. Like if for whatever reason I did this set, and honestly, I don't know, it just didn't feel that good. I didn't get that good of an activation or, you know, whatever. Then I can just say, fuck it, and do something else. Let's do some 
overhead dumbbell next. I'm really fucking feel. I almost. So I don't know what you know about tricep anatomy, but basic gist is like, if it looks like a horseshoe, this side's the short head, and this side's the long head. So I'm feeling a lot of shit going on in that long head with these, especially when I really squeeze at the bottom. That was a good starter. But let's find a bench. There's some dumbbell overhead. All right, so these are, they are kind of funky. I mean, it's not necessarily the most natural movement path. I could definitely see how throwing, you know, fucking 50 pounds over your head and having it pull behind you could, you know, potentially fuck with your uh, rotator cuff. But if you're careful and you don't, you know, you know, fucking wrench the weight up, as long as you can manage it with your tricep, I think you're good. You know, it's not always a bad thing to do things that are, let's just call them uh, anatomically unconventional. I mean, I was a fucking huge fan of behind the neck shoulder press, even with a free barbell. Uh, part of the reason, well, there's two reasons why I don't do that now. One being my front delts are overdeveloped, so I don't need to hit them. And then also, I don't have the shoulder mobility to get behind my neck like that. <laughs> I'm sure if I stretched, I could, but you know, I'm definitely a little muscle bound. But all I'm focusing on here is making sure I get a full stretch. So really let the fucking tricep get pulled. I mean, pretty much just as tight as it can get by the dumbbell. And then same thing as normal, many reps as possible, plus some partials. Okay, partials are actually kind of hard with this one. Okay. Let's do one more just like that, and then I think I'll just finish with like a straight bar push down, or yeah. We'll see. Focus on your lift set by set. Don't get distracted by what you're gonna do later and lose focus on what you're really doing right in this moment. All right, let's move on to something. Yeah, I think finishing with just normal straight bar pushdowns, that will be a pretty perfect ender. So instead of just pushing straight down, I'm trying to pull the handle sideways. So as I finish this rep, I'm not just going straight down. Really, in my mind, I want this thing to get fucking ripped in half. But same procedure as normal. As many good reps with a hard squeeze with full range of motion as possible. And then, once I can't do any more of that, no chance am I just going to rack it. I've still got a ton of partials in the tank. Yeah. 
I went to mind and thrown a plate on the side of the stack, but dude, triceps are fucking fully inflated. Let's start some buys and then get ready to check out the pump. I'm already excited. The bicep curl machine, which I kind of had in my mind that I wanted to start with, it's occupied, occupado. So instead, I mean, I, can, I guess I don't want it that bad that I'm not asking to work in. So whatever, but instead of doing that, I'll just recreate a little bit of a movement that's in a similar style. So incline bench, two cable arms below me and enough weight that I know by 10 reps, I'll be kind of burning, but not so heavy that it's like, you know, I'm going to fail at six. That's kind of the gauge that I'm going for, but burn out and do some partials and I don't know, man. I almost feel like my buys need less volume than my triceps. Maybe just because my triceps are slacking. But let's, uh, let's see how this opener goes. In terms of the warm up, I just started with 20 pounds on this machine, a couple reps, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. And now what it says is 50 pounds. Of course, it's a cable machine, so it's not like the same as a 50 pound dumbbell, but whatever. Half to stack each arm. Let's sort of out. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a decent one. Oh, buy some machines open. Let's go. Let's move quick. Now this is where I wanted to start. Honestly, the feeling of that set of curls with the cables and this one are pretty similar. I, I mean, it's a different movement. Of course, it's going to be a different stimulus for the buys, even if just slightly. But I do prefer something like this because something about like the mechanics of the lever arm or whatever, I don't have any tension on my traps. Like when I was doing those sets with the cables, my traps were coming to, into play so much as I do the curl. I could tell I was activating them. And that just may be my fault for not being relaxed and just focusing on my buys. But when I do these curls, I don't have to focus on my back or stability or my grip or anything. All I get to think of is squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. I feel like I make that same little analogy every time on my on this uh, on this machine. But I think I make it every time because it's fucking true. So let's uh, let's just play something crazy and try to go so hard that I can't even get any movement in the partials at the end. Let's just call it there. I think this bicep workout is just going to be one set of something, move on, another set of something, move on, and until I'm done. But those felt pretty good. I like this machine a lot. Ugh. The only problem I have sometimes is it's a little bit constrictive on my wrist. 
Because with a normal dumbbell curl, I won't get any wrist pain. Because when I'm at the bottom of the curl, right, my arms kind of naturally rotate like this. So the bottom starts like this, and then I, you know, supinate upwards towards the top. But with a curl like this, or a straight bar, I mean, the fucking palms are facing upward the whole rep. So sometimes it can kind of give me a little bit of a, let's just call it a twinge in my whole forearm region. But not lately. So I get to slam this, this mofo around. But let's, uh, let's find a cable, do some bicep isolating under grip pull downs. All right, so definitely not the most conventional bicep movement, but if you can actually execute it without pulling with your lats and you really actually feel your biceps firing, then, you know, the movement will speak for itself. So when I do these, in no fucking way imaginable, am I at all working my lats? Am I at all working my traps? The only thing that I'm imagining, even though it does look like a pull down, all I'm trying to focus on is pulling my forearm to my bicep. Like even though I'm doing a pull down, I'm just focusing on pulling with my biceps. I, I, I really can't explain it any better than that. So maybe that's not the best way to word it. But I mean, it's, it's kind of something where you just have to try it for yourself, honestly. For a long time, I thought these were for fucking whack jobs. But, you know, come to realize after actually trying it for myself that I can get a pretty brutal squeeze on the bottom and really feel this outside peak flexing. Really all I'm saying is you gotta try this shit out. Keep an open mind. Okay. Oh. Um. Do I even want to do one more? What's uh, what's the over under? Is the next clip going to be a set of something, or are we going to the pose down? Uh, let me chew on this for a little bit. One more, one more set of dumbbell curls. So, fifties, controlled, good squeeze. Then these fuckers are fully pumped. <sighs> Oh. 
All right, let's, uh, fuck, man. Let's check the pump. We are done. You tell me, scale of one to pumped, how we're looking. And don't, don't sugarcoat it. Give it to me straight, all right? So let's get this thing off. Ugh. Oh, all right, we got some fucking meat hanging off the bones, that's for sure. <laughs> Who could be dead satisfied with that front double buy? Certainly no one in their right mind. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's pretty much all the poses I know. Most muscular. Oh. Oh. I'm, uh, I'm channeling Marcus Rule with this one. I'd put some Ramstein in, but it would probably get copywritten. Um, oh, so in terms of forearms, I will keep adding forearms in. They'll sort of show up periodically. Every so often, forearms will get a little... They'll get their moment to shine, but really, they aren't too far behind. So, if you've got something that's ahead of the game, you know, why put any more energy hyping it up, you know? If you got a strong point, then you don't really have a strong point. You just have weak points that you need to catch up, if you, uh, if you see what I'm saying there. You know, and I think that's a cooler mindset to have. But... That is enough of that for arms. It only took, what's it been? Oh, about an hour. So 30 minutes each, you know, tries and buys, including, well, no, 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 even less than that. I forgot to account for the warm up time, the interset chats, relatively efficient lifts time wise. But uh, let's get the car, man. We out. Pumped well fed with a variety of food the pre-workout meal which was followed by a nice hour-long nap was two packs of ramen and 13 whole eggs uh, i will admit it did take me a little while to get those eggs down even a dozen at once whole eggs that is uh with all the fat and the yolks very filling but i'll say this this is my technique or uh, whenever I make a ton of scrambled eggs. Separate the whites, throw those in the pan first, pretty much, honestly, kind of solidify them. Like, really, I, I kind of cook the egg whites completely. And then I put all the yolks in a bowl and I add the yolks afterward and then mix it in. Because if you cook them both at once, then the yolk gets real dry when it turns into a hard yellow. I kind of want to leave the yolk a little soft but have the whites fully cooked. I think that's, if you haven't tried that before, you may potentially be in for a treat. That is if you don't really love like, you know, cooked whites. I leave the yolk a little, just a little runny, just a little runny. But runny whites, not awesome, not awesome to eat. Honestly, fuck, I need to look into it. I forget if you can digest pasteurized egg whites completely because the problem with drinking egg whites like cracked out of the shell egg whites which I mean I've fucking drank at least a thousand of them this is kind of you know earlier on before I sort of understood this idea but the egg whites themselves raw you can't break down the protein completely you really only get about 50% but you can drink so many fucking egg whites I mean, it's not filling at all. And as a protein source, dude, egg whites are where it's at. So, I don't know, I need to look at that again. You Tell me in the comments, 
are pasteurized egg whites fully digestible? I don't think so, but I, I don't remember. If they are, then I gotta start drinking my egg whites again. Because when I'm bulking up, I'm really not so excited about eating the protein. Like, when I was dieting, steaks, ground beef, loved it. Loved eating those high protein meals. But when, you know, when I'm bulking with like 800 grams of carbs in the day, the protein is just kind of, it almost gets a little bit hard to get down. Like the carbs go down so easy. So you know, if you have a pretty hard time getting, I don't know, for, if for whatever reason you don't love ground beef, like browned in a pan, then fucking get a different protein source, man. You've got a couple at your disposal. You've got a couple at your disposal at that top grade of proteins. You know, you've got milk protein, beef, chicken, fish is definitely up there, eggs. That's pretty much fucking it. Now, look. Uh, if you're fucking vegan, you know, soy protein, it's not like it's a zero, but in terms of like the so the <coughs> The grading scale for the protein, it's based on a number of factors. It's like, you know, amino acid array, digestive, you know, whatever. I'm not a scientist. But soy protein, you know, fucking wheat, whatever, plant-based protein powders, stuff like that. I mean, it's way down in the fucking 60 range. So, you know, what does that tell you? I mean, I don't want to in uh, I don't want to invade on your beliefs. But Let's just say muscle builds muscle, as it were. But, uh, yeah. So plan now. Man, just go home, chill. Ah, uh, oh, fuck. After I did my cardio, I went to Sheets, and I got a couple of treats. I got some Reese's Cups and some, uh, I got a Monster. Or no, no, pre-cardio, I got some treats. Like a Monster for the caffeine. Some Reese's Cups. I got some... What else did I get? I don't remember. I got a little quarter gallon of chocolate milk. And this time an actual quarter gallon. I did not realize that those big ones were actually a full gallon. All I would do is look at the nutrition label and plug in the macros. But I left it in my fucking duffel bag. So a whole day of unrefrigerated. I think it's uh, I think it's a little bit too far gone. So that kind of sucks. Damn. That's an easy... like. 800 calories right there in the chocolate milk, dude. I mean, I don't need to defend myself, right? I don't care when people talk any kind of smack. But just look at the fucking macros, man. When I pull up that half a gallon of chocolate milk, I'm not just looking at carbs and fats, dude. I'm seeing, what is it? It's eight servings and then nine grams of protein per serving. So in that whole half a gallon of the chocolate milk, I've got... 70 grams of protein, 72, 72 grams of fat, and like 250 grams of carbs. Uh, I forget what that adds up to, but that's like, it's approaching 2,000 calories. I think it's maybe closer to 1,500. It's in there, so. But, again, milk, solid protein source, I don't have a fucking problem. You know, I don't care if Arnold says it's for babies. I'm going to keep drinking the milk. But... Ah, oh, shit. What was I? I was trying to say something. I forget. Uh, oh, yeah. So, when it comes to gaining weight, you know, this is, of course, train hard. You want to stimulate the muscle so that you can actually grow. But you could train as hard and perfectly as you fucking want. You're not going to gain weight unless you eat in a calorie surplus. So, I was, let's just say this. I don't see dudes who say... I can't gain weight. I, I got a fast metabolism. I never see them drinking a fucking half gallon of chocolate milk. And do not take that as a fucking, like, fucking rule to live by. You know, of course. I'm just saying that if you want to gain weight, you have to get a certain amount of, a certain amount of calories above your maintenance calories. So your body has you know, energy and nutrients to actually deposit onto your frame, you know. Just to maintain muscle, I could just eat fucking probably, I don't know, 3,000 calories in perpetuity and keep my training up. And I'd probably get a little bit leaner and I'd just reach a baseline of staying the same weight. I'd be holding on to my muscle too. And that'd be it. I'd be locked in. 
it takes more energy and more effort to put shit under your frame than it does to maintain your frame. So all I'm really saying is however hard you've been eating and training, if your weight and your size and your strength has all been at the same level for months, then that means that all the energy and the effort that you've been putting in is just enough to maintain where you're at. So that should be a call to action for you to change something. Now, if you've been taking like a rest week every three weeks, I think that could be impeding on your progress as well. But I say the only thing that's stopping people from getting big is tracking their fucking macros and making sure they're actually in a calorie surplus. And then inverse to that, I think the reason why people have so much trouble losing body fat is, for one thing, just lack of knowledge about food in general. I mean, there's so much just BS that people think about food and whatever. Like, I think there's just a disconnect between the understanding of the fact that foods are, at their core, just you know, units of energy per calorie and stuff like that. I feel like people just eat so much fucking... Now look, I eat weird shit, but you're not going to catch me having just a Starbucks Frappa Rainbow Chino for breakfast, skipping lunch, skipping dinner, and then having a tub of ice cream at night. You know, I feel like that is not an uncommon day for some, let's just say for some folks running around. But uh, what the hell? I don't, I don't remember where I was going with this. Take a... Uh, any of those conclusive statements that I said during that little ramble, just, you know, take it to heart. Take it to freaking heart, so. T minus two days, actually only a little less than two days, day and a half until Thanksgiving. Pops is already prepping the turkey. He's uh, got this big ass meat injector straight out of Attack on Titan with uh, this fancy butter, so. Turkey two days in advance. I'm pretty excited. I am pretty fucking excited. I think... Oh, I think it was actually a Christmas dinner. It wasn't Thanksgiving. But... Yeah, that must have been... I've, I was actually tracking my weight pretty consistently back then. I think that would be... Honestly, not too long ago. Maybe two... I can't remember. I think probably three Christmases ago, maybe two Christmases ago, uh, whatever. That Christmas night was the first time that I ever weighed more than 200 pounds on the scale. Now, I was not 200 pounds, but I had a full belly from a big-ass dinner, plus drinking a ton of water. That was a pretty badass milestone. Nobody starts at 200. But, I really do think everybody can get there. Don't limit your mind like that. So, what else was I about to say? I feel like I was about to... S I can't even remember. I'm probably running a little bit low on glycogen from having finished that freaking arm day. But, yeah, tomorrow is going to be legs. So, I really want to get a good night's rest before then. Make sure I have some big-ass meals tonight. And I think today, I'm going to lock it in. So I've kind of just been eating whatever. Like, I eat kind of whatever amount of food. Just when I'm hungry, eat a big-ass meal. I've been tracking it, of course. And I've been floating around, like, the 4,000-calorie range. I, uh, I think tonight onward, I'll either pick 5,000 or 4,500. Hmm. Not exactly sure yet. But it's been about a month, or approaching a month of going from you know, dieting and actually staying under a calorie deficit to you know, just munching on whatever I get my hands on. And I put on a pretty significant amount of mass. I'm definitely up in the fully carved up range. But if I want to keep gaining weight, then that means I got to keep filling up my stomach with a substantial amount of carbs, fats, and proteins. So, I, yeah. Yeah, I'll keep you updated. I did not weigh myself this morning. I need to get a bathroom scale for the house. I've got one in my apartment. I don't know why I didn't bring it back. I just totally forgot. But I definitely think we're approaching 250 in the morning now. Which, I mean, 250 only one month into the bulk. 
That bodes well for the future of this one. Every, uh, ev at the end, or at the beginning, whichever one makes sense, my transitions from bulks to cuts, that end state versus the beginning state, over the last, well, actually, fuck, I've only done one bulk. Uh, after the last bulk, or every one previous to, it's been pretty significant. So I'm kind of excited to be able to look at the difference between the end of the next cut and the end of this last cut. Because I saw some pretty significant changes compared to the end of the last, last cut, two cuts ago. That was way back in uh, January-ish when I started the, the spring bulk. But, yeah, that's the goal. Bulk, gain a certain amount of weight. Let's just say, for like, not this isn't how much I gained, but let's just say, for example, if on the bulk I gained 20 pounds, there's some body fat mixed in there. So on the cut, I want to try to trim that off. So 20 pound bulk, let's say 15 pound cut, five pounds of muscle left over. I don't want to be, pre I don't want to assume anything, but I think we can all handle that sort of subtraction. Don't, uh, don't think that I don't condone main gaming either. You know, I did that for years, but there's definitely something to be said about the bulking and cutting method. So I gotta get hyped up for legs tomorrow, cardio in the morning, keep getting my food down, and before we know it, I'm gonna be telling you guys, hey guys, this morning I was 265. Whoa! Let's, uh, let's just get excited for that day. So I'll freaking see you next time.